All right, hello, this is Aldo Figueroa, and this is part three of this Maya tutorial. In part one, I showed you how to create a turnaround camera that goes around your model. In part two, I showed you how to create ambient occlusion, which allows you to create a result that looks something like this. And now, part three, I'm going to show you how you could set up your render settings so you can uh, render out this animation um, using your turnaround camera and having these finished results. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I do want to note that I am using Maya 2011, so any changes that you might find in the newer versions, uh, Maya 2012 or 2013, I want you to just make note that this is the 2011 version. Uh, also, since we're going to be rendering out an animation, uh, you need to have some animation work done. So. Uh, that's why we have this turnaround camera. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, to render out, uh, before we start, uh, we tell Maya to render out your images, you need to make sure that you know where your files are going to be uh, sent to. It's very important that you set your project directory. If you have yet to create a project directory, shame on you. Uh, but let's go ahead and go to File. Under Project, you're able to select New to create a new project directory, but I just want to set it. I already created a project directory. I'm going to tell it Set um, because I want to select a project that I already have. I have this guy right here, which is Mighty Mug Ambient Inclusion. I'm just going to double click on it just to show you. You can see that Maya already creates these folders it, uh, for files it knows it's going to create. It's, it wants to get a, it's going to want to send these files, the images, in my images folder. So let me just go back up and tell it my Mighty Mug Ambient Occlusion. I'm going to tell it to set. So it knows, I know where it's going to send my files. Otherwise it'll send it to the default location. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the render settings because we need to change some settings. So we already set our render using Mental Ray and it is going to be using the production quality, but we need to change the settings within Common. So within here, first things first, under File Output, let's give it a name. I'm going to call this uh, Mighty Mug underscore AMB OCC for ambient inclusion. For the image format, use a format that is going to be compatible with your pipeline. I like using TIFF because this is going to give me a high quality image. Uh, I don't want to cr compress these images out, so I don't like using JPEGs. I like using TIFFs. Some people like using uh, there's other options right here. There's lots of different options. Uh, some people like using PNGs. I'm going to go ahead and just use TIFF. For frame slash animation extension, we need to change this because we want to render out a whole sequence of uh, images. I'm going to tell it name dot number sign dot extension. For frame padding, I'm going to change this to three. What this does, let me just select elsewhere. You can see right here, it's going to give me three number spots: zero, zero, one to zero, well to my end frame. Since I'm going to render out 168 frames, I want three number spots. Let me scroll down frame range. I want to start at frame 1 and I want to end at frame 168. That is the last frame of my animation. I want to render by frame 1. That means render out every frame. You could tell it to, f to render out on twos if you want to have your animation to be animated on twos, for example. Um, but I want my animation to render out every frame. As I scroll down, under rendable cameras. Uh, you can see right here that there's two cameras selected. Uh, I only want to render out using my turntable camera, so for this one I'm going to go ahead and trash it. Uh, you're not deleting the perspective camera, you're just telling it not to render out the perspective camera. This area is important that you do not overlook it. I've seen many times where students overlook this, uh, where they do not select their camera and they think that their animation is rendering out really fast. It's like, wow, this is going really fast. In actuality, what is happening is it's rendering out the same image over and over and over again. So make sure you have the right camera selected. So now I'm going to scroll down. For image size, make sure that you have the right image size selected. 
I was conducting some tests which were at uh, smaller size, but now I want to go back to the actual size that I want to use, which is HD 720. And once you have these settings done, uh, your render settings are ready. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And uh, if I want to do uh, one more render test at higher quality, just to make sure it looks good. Let's see, for some reason I have the wrong window selected, so I'm going to cancel this out. See, I need to click on it here and now render this out. And let's see, these, rend these settings are correct, but that's OK. I could easily fix those. So yeah, my max distance has changed, my samples has changed. That's OK. I remember what my settings were previously. Max distance, I told it 150. Great. I'm going to go ahead and render out these settings. See, very important that I tested it out. Otherwise, my uh, animation would take all this time to render out. And once I look at it, I would be upset because it's not what I expected. Um, but here I go. I'm doing my render test just to make sure that it looks the way that I want it to. Uh, do bear in mind the, the different factors, the complexity of your model, uh, what your render settings that you have, uh, how large the image is that you're going to be rendering out. Something that's smaller will render out a lot faster as opposed to something that is a high resolution image. This is uh, 720p, which is 1280 by 720. Uh, also, keep in consideration your computer. The faster the CPU, the faster it'll render out. Um, and there's uh, lots of other variables uh, to keep into consideration. And let's see, I think, is it done? Yeah, it's done. I'm going to go ahead and click on this one to one so that I could see what it looks like. All right. I like what, the, what this model will look like. Here is just a sample. Let me go ahead and close this window. And lastly, in order to, we set our render settings, but we have yet to render out our animation. You would switch to the rendering menu set. Under renderer, you just go into, you can go into the batch render options just to see what you have. Uh, under messages, verbosity level, uh, just give me warning messages. I'm going to go ahead and just use the default render settings. Uh, you can go ahead and tell it to batch render and close. And what's going to happen is that it's going to send your, uh, your render settings, your file, your information to the Maya batch render so it can render out every frame of animation. I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. Go ahead and continue. And I like turning on this guy right here, which opens up your script editor. Within the script editor, it gives you uh, information about what's going on. You can see that right now, it's rendering out image one, and it's 5% done. So this is something that, oh, I got an error. That's OK. Let me close this. Um, it's probably because I'm also doing the screen recording. Uh, but it will tell you what's going on. So you just have to set it and wait. All right, so that's how you go ahead and go about set your render settings. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment sections. I uh, hope that you found these tutorials helpful. Uh, and again, uh, let me know if you have any comments or any questions. Otherwise, I hope uh, you're able to accomplish what you want to do. And uh, good luck to you. Great, thanks.